Marshall. All right, right here is a bunch of obviously mid-century 1960s, and boy, can you tell what color scheme was possible? Was uh, popular around 1960? I think so. And some of this stuff is probably from the late 50s. We'll start off with this plasticky kind of ashtray. I only paid 50 cents for it. It's got some burn marks here from the cigarettes, which hurts it a little bit. Uh, I can tell you on the bottom, it is called, it's made by uh, Anholt Ashtray. I went online and, ooh, look how dirty that is. Anyway, there's a bunch of these online. This isn't going to sell for much. I just love the, uh, what is it called, the kidney shape? Or the boomerang it's not really a boomerang but that mid-century turquoise color real typical of that era is really kind of neat I don't know about these uh, tumblers right here because oh I do know I'm sorry they're hazel atlas see there are only two I usually don't buy just two glasses four would have been great but I only found two so I picked them up anyway for 25 cents each Back there is a Blendo set. That's the first set of Blendo that I've actually ever purchased. Um, I can't say that I'm a huge Blendo fan. I did buy these because of the great iconic turquoise color. And I also really love how this is frosted. Is that what they call it? Not frosted, but the way the blue goes into the white and the white fades away and there's the gilding around the top. Uh, I also like it that it doesn't have the matte finish. It's more of a glossy finish on these. Sometimes the matte finish can get dirty and scrapey and whatnot. But there are one, two, three, four, five, six of those. Um, might be able to get about 15, 18 bucks for them. There's a Gemco. I think it's Gemco. Yes. Gemco, New York City. It's a 1950s syrup jug with uh, the pink top. I've sold lots of these, never had one with a pink top before, so that's kind of cool. Back there is a really nifty, uh, there were probably two of those, it's a dresser lamp. I need to get a proper, uh, what do you call it, fiberglass shade for it. But it has the Leaping Gazelle, which was a popular Art Deco motif in the 20s and 30s and it kind of came back again in the 60s. I wish I had two of those, but hey, one is better than none. And of course, the Butterprint Turquoise on White uh, Pyrex refrigerator dishes. And I found both of those. I think they were a dollar each. And I can get maybe 20 bucks for the pair of them. There's a lot of them out there. It's hot right now, so now's the time to sell them. Underneath it is a fla, blah, blah, blah. Is that Fire King? Let's see. I think it is. It doesn't have a lid, but I'll find one. I love this pattern. It is Fire King, okay. Um, I think it's just called Blue Stars. Uh, never seen it before in the wild, so I had to get it because of the colors. I don't really know what it sells for. Here in the front is a little juice set. Now I'm guessing this would be for orange juice. These are small, these are what? three inches three and a half inches I don't know what you would serve out of that other than juice but the little pitcher does have the ice lip so if anybody knows what else I mean I don't know too much about alcoholic beverages so I I'm guessing it's just a little juice set these are too tiny for iced tea I love the pastel colors it's in great shape the gilding is all really good on it there's some frosting on it here in pastel colors and we know who made it if I turn it around how about that? Corning Glassworks. Now why they put the sticker here on the rim, the ice rim, I don't know. I wish they had put it on the bottom. I'm almost tempted to <laughs> get it off of there and then reattach it to the bottom. I don't think it's ever been used because who would use it with that label on there? And it's all sitting on top of a really neat 1960s tablecloth also in aqua. So that's my 1960s grouping right there. Now we'll move into the 1940s and 30s. 
boy can you see a change in the color scheme, right? From that to that. Right in the front is a beautiful piece of, Capri of uh, Cambridge glass. This was made in the 1940s and it, the pattern is called Cap Caprice and the color is called Moonlight Blue. Isn't that cool? It's just a, oops. <laughs> it's just a divided uh, condiment, uh, not condiment, but uh, you know, olives, pickles, whatever. And of course, it's a serving piece. Again, made in the 1940s. It's probably worth 15 bucks. Here's a set of nesting bowls. These are all Hazel Atlas. There would be a fourth one, which would be the biggest one. I only have three, but I was really excited to find all three of them uh, at one time. So we can see there's the big one. And I said there would be one larger one. And they're in really great shape. They're pretty heavy. These don't chip very easily. Not like, aren't any utensil marks. These are also from, you know, circa 1933, something like that. These were very inexpensive. Back there are two Hazel Atlas glass kitchen jars, also from the same era. We can see again the same old Hazel Atlas mark on the bottom. These were a dollar each, and uh, they did have glass lids, green glass lids, which are long gone. Uh, you can find the lids. I could probably find replacements for the lids online. It would cost me probably more than it's worth, uh, unless I was gonna keep these. So these will probably just go up for sale even without the lids, but who knows? I mean, I could go out to a flea market Saturday and find lids for these. So let's hope that happens. Some more depression. This was depression mixing bowl week, I'll tell you. Uh, so these are Hazel Atlas here. This one, I believe, is anchor glass or hocking glass before it became anchor hocking. This is a heavy, heavy bowl. A uh, mixing bowl, again, from the early 30s before the company became Anchor Hawking, and it was just uh, Hawking glass. And then two more mixing bowls. Here's one, a big one in pink. And a, uh, another one in, uh, again, in that green, in that depression green color. So I really did well with mixing bowls. Here's one made by McKee in the front, and you can see the McKee circle on the bottom, and just, well, this isn't gonna focus, but it, it is stamped McKee in there. You can barely see it. The stamp didn't quite take very heavily. So this is the um, known as the Red Sailboats, and this came out in the 30s. This is a mixing bowl. There would have been, uh, four of them nesting bowls. This is pretty popular. This one bowl, probably about 30 bucks. A couple weeks ago, Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage found a set of refrigerator, I think they were refrigerator dishes and they had the lids. So if you wanna see other examples of this, check out his archives. It was probably a couple weeks ago. Here in the front is also Hazel Atlas. Uh, and I put these two together because they're jam jars or jelly, refrigerator jars for jam and this is the apple and this is the strawberry and if we look at the bottom they don't say McKee they don't say uh, they're not marked Hazel Atlas did I say McKee these are Hazel Atlas these are made in the 1950s I find the apples all the time I almost never find the strawberries so it's kind of cool to find the two of them I skipped this little guy right here, don't know the maker. It is a 1930s depression green uh, candy dish. I don't think it's Fenton. Fenton made a lot of stuff like this, but I'm not really getting the Fenton vibe on it. So I don't know who made it. But it's, again, circa 1935. Wouldn't that look nice with after dinner mints? All right, I've never seen this before, and I think it's worth about 10 bucks. You'll notice, What's the shape of the mug? Who made the mug? Fire King, Anchor Hawking, you got it, with the typical D handle there. That's called the D handle. And you've seen these in Jadeite. You've seen them in Powder Blue uh, or Azurite. Uh, is Azurite? I don't know. And also, uh, 
ivory or custard. Here's Robin. Yes, there was one that had Batman on it. Now on the back side, it does say Batman with Robin the Boy Wonder uh, and but there is a, a there is another mug that actually has Batman on uh, that has Ro, uh, mm, Batman on the front. Uh, first time I've ever seen this. I'm guessing this is late 50s. Not sure about that. This guy I was excited to get. I've seen him in the wild a couple of times, but passed them by. I picked this one up because of its excellent condition. Now we see on the bottom it says the Siemens bank for savings and if you look really closely it says I don't know if you can see it uh, try to focus it's the contemporary uh, ceramics company of uh, Chatham New Jersey but it was actually the McCoy company it was designed by a guy in Jersey who founded the company but McCoy made the pottery and I think these were promotional items for the bank you open up a savings account and I think you would get one of these uh, yeah it's a piggy bank and it's 1940s you can tell it's an art deco stylized sailor in his bell-bottom trousers it's an excellent condition they don't sell for a lot the better the condition the better now this has no crazing on it the cork on the bottom is there the stopper on the bottom is there and so it's probably a $20 bank really cool so I like that a lot now you're looking at this and you're saying that thing looks awful look at all the paint that's coming off of it Yeah, but somebody is going to love this in their 1940s kitchen. Look how Art Deco it is. And it says right down here, Duraglass. I haven't looked that up yet. Haven't had a chance. This is fresh from the attic. D-U-R-A-G-L-A-S. Have not looked it up. I don't know who Duraglass was, but I will find out. And yes, the paint is coming off. This is a really cool 1940s. All right, all my friends in the Netherlands. The Dutch theme was popular in the 1930s, 40s in their indigenous costumes there. Really cool. Probably was just a, refriger um, a kitchen glass jar. Who knows what it held. But even in that condition, somebody's going to love that in their 1940s kitchen. And... In the back, we have two dresser lamps. That's 1965, that's 1945. What a difference. Let's move this so you can see a little bit better. Um, you know I love these old dresser lamps. I pick them up when I can find them. Nice mirrors on them, good shape. I always have to show you the Bakelite Art Deco plugs, which I love. And then finally, the last item to show you is an Art Deco Hall teapot, which is very heavy. It's in the back here. That was also made in green and silver. Now, this, is, this one is black and silver, but the, uh, there was one that was green with uh, the silver. Like, this would be green, this would be green. It's a very heavy teapot. Very well made. Love the Art Deco design on it. I'll show it to you. You can see it a little bit better now. Isn't that cool? Uh, and again, that's deco period, 1930s. So we'll put this back, and I will back up and let you have a look of everything again. Did I miss anything? I think we got it all. Okay, so I've got to get listing. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, leave your comments below. Welcome new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe and the like button. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying so long for now.